Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. We're gonna be putting that 3950X build slash benchmark on hold because two things just came in the mail. Finally got this bad boy, the 10900K. I've been trying to get my hands on this since release and it's been a gong show. Finally got that. That's gonna go on the personal rig for gaming. Um, so I'm gonna be bringing my gaming rig down here, pulling it all apart on camera and stuff. The second thing that came in, which I had to wait four months for, Valve Index VR headset. I, man, this took four months of ugh, disaster. I am not a VR connoisseur by any means. I have no idea about anything VR. All I know is my childhood was Half-Life and stupid Valve released Half-Life Alex on on VR only. It's it's actually the most brilliant marketing and sales thing Valve ever did. They like they w don't release Half-Life 3, make it vaporware. Wait 10 years. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, we have this great VR headset for $1,000, and the only way you can play the next Half-Life is if you buy one. Like, oh my god. Like, it's it's genius. Anyway, I'm not going to be doing any VR content. Uh, I don't know enough about that stuff, and there's lots of good VR channels out there. Um, but the moral of the story is I need to just get this in my personal rig and update the update it all. And I need to get playing Half-Life Alex because that's all I want to do right now. Um, I need to know what... I, man, it's been 10 years since I've played Half-Life. And I, I... Oh. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to get my personal rig down here. We um, have a lot of work to do on it. Uh, I'm going to bring it down and then I'll explain all the things that we're going to be doing. All right, guys. This is my personal rig. Lian Li 011 Dynamic XL. I know it's kind of like a basic bitch case because everybody has one, but it was the only case that fits three 360 mil RAS and a 120. So I literally have 360, 400, and wait, I can't even do math. 360 times three plus 120, whatever the heck that is. But um, it's been about a year since I took this thing apart and you can kind of tell like here check this out like like the dust actually that's not even that bad but like the dust kind of accumulated on the filter um yeah the one back here as well so I'm actually using this exhaust fan as an intake so these three intake like this and then it all shoots out the back over here that's how I set this one up just because I wanted the uh, these three fans to not be the other way around because this looks nicer so I pretty much geared the entire thing for looks um, you can also tell that the fluid inside is starting to get kind of murky you can actually look you can tell really well from the camera it's kind of starting to get like yellowy and like bacteria e like it's getting pretty gross um, I did use, um, what did I use in this? I used, I used thermal take coolant, some clear stuff. Um, honestly, I'm surprised it like decayed that fast. I'm not going to use that stuff again. Uh, this time I have some Corsair clear fluid that I'm going to be using, but I pretty much have to take the, I have to drain it take the entire thing apart, take all the blocks apart, and I have to go with a toothbrush and remove all the scum that I possibly can so I don't have to do this for a long time again. Um, there's special brushes you can buy for the tubes. Uh, they're just like um, paint like uh, paint gun brushes with like the, the long thing with the bristles on them, and you just kind of go in and out. Um, those are really easy to clean. But um, yeah, I got Reaper here, my favorite Overwatch character. My wife got that for me. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's just gonna it's just gonna be a long multi-day 
tedious process. Because if I'm going to be replacing the motherboard and the CPU anyway, then it's time for a full teardown and a full rebuild. Even though everything is going to be in the exact same spot. You can actually tell that there's like dust buildup behind the fan on the fins back here. So I got to take all the fans off, blow all the dust out. Like no cutting corners here at all. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, all right, we're back. She is complete and she looks exactly the same. More or less the motherboard. It, it looks the exact same. Um, it took me a couple of days to finish this one because I was having some insane memory stability problems on this, uh, on this motherboard and platform. Like Z490 is a complete shit show. I, I, I literally put in the exact same settings uh, on my Z390 that I did on this motherboard and I, it was not stable. Um, I attribute that to the daisy chain uh, topology instead of the T topology. I wish Intel would have... I wish there were motherboards that actually had T topology that I would have picked one of those because I, I bought four RAM sticks for Z390. And then they go daisy chain. Anyway, it's a long story. I'm gonna do a whole, I'm gonna do a whole separate video on uh, why the hell the memory settings didn't work on Z490. Anyway, I got it to work. Uh, the exact same um, performance numbers, not the same settings, but same performance numbers as my Z390. Same. Uh, the core. I got a good chip actually. It does 5.3 gigahertz on all the cores, so that was that's sick. That's sick. Um, I got really lucky on my chip. So at 1.28 volts, like how the hell does Intel keep pushing the boundaries on 14 nanometer? It's it's insane. I thought the 9900KS was like the cream of the crop silicon. This still beats it. They added two more cores and it can clock higher at less voltage. It's bad shit. Like how the hell do they keep they keep doing that? To be to be totally honest, if like Intel can stay on 14 nanometer all they want if they keep improving it like this. Like I who cares? Like who cares about the uh the node, you know what I mean? Um Yeah, just just totally just totally crazy. If they if they actually had the same IPC as uh, Zen 2, like if you if you ran this at like 4.7 gigahertz instead of 5.3, the power consumption would actually just like be equal to or less than a Zen 2 chip. You know what I mean? Like it's they did they're doing such good work with that 14 nanometer process. Anyway, rambling done. Uh, let's go over to the benchmarks. I did the benchmarks at uh, 4133 RAM, same as the 9900KS, and I did it at 5.3 gigahertz, uh, all the cores on 10 cores. So the only real difference between both of the builds was 5.3 10 cores, and the other one was 5.2 8 cores. So let's see if that even makes a difference at all. All right, here are the, here are the numbers.
And there you have it, guys. Those are the numbers. Eh. Not, not really worth the upgrade at all. Um, it literally made no difference at all in any eSport titles whatsoever. A uh, little bit of a difference in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And then obviously the synthetics like Fire Strike and stuff. But if you're doing eSports... Literally zero. Even in Warzone, it made no difference at all. Zero. Um, which is actually surprising. I thought that game was going to scale a bit more with cores. But it looks like 816 is the uh, the top for that game. It, it Also, but to be fair, I was more GPU bound in that game. Um, the 2080 Ti just can't push any more frames in that game. It's too GPU bound. But uh, that might change in the future. But for now... You don't have to worry about Z490, it's totally skippable. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, hope you guys learned something today. I hope that today was the day that I earned your subscription. Please like it, subscribe, help me get to 100 subscribers, I would really appreciate it. And if you like the content, just comment down below if you have any suggestions or anything that you want me to try out for you, I'd be happy to. And the next video that I'm going to be doing is the, uh, the, the RAM stability problems that I had versus Z390. The Z390 was a better platform for having four RAM sticks, I'll tell you that much. Um, had I have known that, I would have bought in two 16 gig sticks of BDI instead of four 8 gigabyte sticks. But I got it to work, so that's okay. Um, but yeah. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.